اهلا بكم من جديد معنا عبر الاقمار الصناعيه الان دكتور ريموند شنازي من لندن مين هو دكتور ريموند شنازي باختصار شديد جدا لكل المهتمين بالعلم لكل المهتمين بالدواء لكل المهتمين بالدواء الجديد لفيروس سي هذا هو يعني مخترع دكتور العلاج العقار سوفالدي الذي تم الاتفاق عليه بين الحكومه المصريه مؤخرا وبين شركه جيلاد الامريكيه لعلاج هابيتايتس سي او فيروس سي دكتور شنازي الحقيقه ان هو ولد في الاسكندريه عام 50 زي ما انتم شايفين يعني يعني تاريخ طويل من العلم تاريخ طويل من الابحاث تاريخ طويل من الابتكارات رجل اختص ب اختراعات او ابتكارات لعلاج الايدز وايضا فيروس بي وفيروس سي والحقيقه ان له خد جوائز كثيره جدا حصل على عدد كبير من الجوائز العلميه من اهم واكثر العلماء التاثيرا الان في العالم دكتور ريموند شينازي دكتور شينازي thank you for being with, with yes. us i'm so glad to have you It's a real pleasure to be here talking especially to you. I'm very honored. Thank you. Let me start by asking you, uh, of course, Egypt, uh, a lot of Egyptians are celebrating a deal uh, that is made between uh, the government or the health ministry here in Egypt and uh, uh, Gilad, uh, uh, the company, of course, the medical, uh, uh, the pharmaceutical company, um, to get a better price for uh, Sovaldi, the medicine that you have uh, developed recently. Uh, tell us about this medicine. Tell us about Sovaldi. What is it? How, how is it more efficient in uh, curing uh, a virus? -y? Well, I think you need uh, to develop a drug. You really need certain characteristics. The major characteristics are uh, the potency of the drug, being able to clear the virus from the circulation and from the liver and other compartments where the virus may hide. I think this is very important. Uh, the safety of the drug has to be very high. And uh, probably the most important point is that this drug, uh, you can, very hard to select resistant viruses. So basically, this, what we call the SVR, the success of this drug is extremely high, reaching from 90 to 100% cure rates. How is it different uh, from uh, the previous medications using interferon? Well, first of all, it's an oral drug, so you can swallow it in your, in your mouth. You take it once a day and usually for a course of about 12 weeks. Mm. Whereas uh, interferon therapies, as you know, it can take a year or longer. And the success rate is very low in the range of 40 to 50 percent of the patient taking it are successful, even less in certain populations. And with Savaldi, of course, you're getting very high rates of cures. Um. I've read one of your quotes saying that this is the first time in history of human mankind, uh, of human uh, uh, mankind, that we have a cure for a viral disease. What does this mean? That, that is correct. I mean, basically, before we had vaccines, vaccines are great. Mm. They prevent virus infection. But once you're already infected, vaccine does not work. So you need a drug. And by taking the drug, swallowing the drug, you basically uh, destroy the virus forever and that's the the major difference and this is the first time that we actually have an oral drug that completely uh, eradicates the virus uh, the other drugs that we have for and as antivirals are basically suppress the virus but they don't cure mm -hmm. and this is a major difference that they suppress the virus but they do not cure uh, yeah, a good example, for example, if you have uh, oral herpes on your yeah. labial, oral herpes, you take a drug called acyclovir mm. or valacyclovir, which is probably available in Egypt. But unfortunately, the virus come ba comes back and comes back and comes back until, until, the, until uh, the end of your day. So uh, it's important. This is, this is a drug you take for 12 weeks. And if you don't get reinfected, you should remain clear of virus for the rest of your life. Is, has it been tested uh, uh, on, the, on all types of uh, uh, hepatitis? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the first one, the second type, the third type? Because in Egypt, as you know, we have a four, the fourth type of uh, virus C. 
Yes, uh, the as you, Egyptians uh, are are plagued with uh, f with genotype four primarily. They do have other genotypes, but the major one is is genotype four. Uh, the beauty of Savaldi, it's a what we call a pan genotypic panning. It pans the horizon. It kills all the viruses, irrespective of the type of genotype that you have, and that's one of the major advantage over interferon, uh, riba combinations, as well as some of the other. Uh, medications that were invented before prior to Sovaldi. So this is clearly a big advancement because it works against all genotypes. A lot of uh, viewers uh, uh, have been asking whether uh, this medication, the Sovaldi, can work uh, on the, or can cure the severe cases of, of uh, virus C or is it only for the, for the beginning of the infection? No, in fact, uh, it works very, very well against the people who have beginning the disease, the very beginning stage of the disease, as well as the more severe cases where we, we usually grade the type of disease from F0 to fibrosis 0 to fibrosis 4. So you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 being the worst. And after 4, you need a liver transplant. And as you know, a liver transplant can be very costly and it's not always very effective uh, because you have to do surgery and you have to find a, a liver. So this drug will prevent the progression of the disease, number one. And number two, it will basically cure the disease up to F3, F4. Once you have the cancer developed, the drug is not effective. So it's important to start treating patients, especially patients who have reached the three and four level. But later on, hopefully, we'll be able to, clear, to basically treat everybody. But first, we have to treat the more sick people as a priority. The, the, more, the, the more severe cases, you mean? Correct. Uh, so is it realistic to say that we, are, we can really work on eradicating uh, uh, virus C um, in, in, in what, 10 years, maybe 15 years? Is this realistic? Yes, I think it is realistic. It's a, it's a, I think uh, it, you have, unfortunately, a very big problem in Egypt with more than 12 million people infected. That's a huge burden. But you, I think what's nice about Egypt is that you have the political will and you have amazingly good physicians and who are trained, very well trained in this disease and uh, have a lot of experience uh, treating patients. So I think this is a big plus. Uh, for Egypt and very few countries have uh, in the in the other developed world or the third world or uh, in the Middle East have the experience of the doctors that we currently have in Egypt. You've got fantastic doctors and they're really top, top, top level. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, I, as I've read uh, a lot of your experiences on uh, HIV uh, and AIDS, what made you think of uh, virus C and uh, hepatitis? Well, you know, I've been involved uh, with HIV for quite some time. Uh, HIV is a big problem. We still haven't found a cure for it, but we're working on it. And while we're working on, um, on, on HIV, we came about, uh, I've been involved in the discovery of three drugs. Uh, they are very effective, uh, they, but they suppress the virus, but they do not cure mm. because the virus goes into a latent phase, a like a sleeping beauty. And uh, sometimes it's, uh, once you stop, the, once you stop the, uh, taking the drug, it reawakens, and that's the problem. Uh, we understood very well that there are similarities between HIV and hepatitis B virus, so we actually found some drugs also effective against hepatitis B. And by the way, more than 94% of the people in the world take one of my drugs that I yeah. invented for mm -hmm. HIV and hepatitis B. So that's really a big, a big, a big plus. And then we realized that in 1994, approximately, we realized that uh, hepatitis C needed to have a cure. And we started working in 1994. That's more than 20 years ago. And uh, remember, the virus was discovered only in 1998. Mm. So it's a relatively new virus being discovered, uh, and, and we now understood a bit better how it worked. The experience we gained from HIV and hepatitis B virus allowed us to start developing drugs for hepatitis C, and that's where I got interested in finding a cure for hepatitis C. 
Tell us the story. How long have you been working on that? And I know that you've sold already the uh, the uh, the copyrights, or you sold the, your company has sold the medicine to uh, uh, Gilad. Uh, so how long have you been working uh, on the uh, Sovaldi? Well, the, we we. We basically started working in uh, 1994, as I said, and uh, we didn't st we're still working on it even now. We're, we're, I have a laboratory at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, and I continue to work. I have more than 50 employees, and actually there are at least two Egyptians working in my lab right now, learning how to develop new drugs for, for hepatitis C virus. Uh, so we're still making progress and improving on what we currently have. Uh, we formed the company, Pharmacet, the company was called Pharmacet, which means pharmaceutical assets, mm. in 1998, and we sold the company in 2011 for about $11.4 billion, B, with a B. And uh, <laughs> so this is really a, a huge success story, yeah. a huge success story for uh, academic research that went from academia to industry and then to big pharma, big pharma being Gilead. Um. Uh, as I know that you're working with the Egyptians now on a new antiviral uh, medication, uh, uh, a, a new development uh, uh, regarding also uh, virus C. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Of course. I mean, I, th I think we're not finished yet. You have such a huge burden in Egypt um, that will need several drugs, not just Sovaldi. Uh, that will come come to bear because uh, ideally you want to find a, uh, some some drugs that uh, that you can combine with Sovaldi and also develop additional drugs because you have such a large burden. So clearly we we're working on this and uh, uh, I was approached by initially by uh, the Egyptian government uh, and then I was in, approached by some fellow Egyptians who live in Baltimore and other parts of the United States uh, to to work with them and try to help them. So about uh, three years ago, I came to Egypt for the first time since I left. I left when I was 13 years old and I uh, was able to, uh, to meet with a lot of people. And then I came back last year. I was very happy to come back again. It was a wonderful experience to come back. I uh, brought tears to my, to my eyes, really being able to come back and see my old country and the development that have taken place since, uh, since then. And clearly, it's, it's a, an amazing emotional experience for me. And I want to be able to continue this, so I'm still working very hard with our friends in Baltimore, with the Egyptian government, with the people at uh, Cairo University, and hopefully something will come out of this relationship. But at this stage, we're st it's still early, we're still talking and discussing the approach that we'll take. I'll come to the Egypt part uh, in a minute, but do you think that uh, uh, Egypt can uh, uh, come to the stage of developing its own uh, uh, medicine, its own medications. Can the Egyptians do that, in your opinion? Well, you know, uh, I, I was trained myself in Egypt. Uh, my initial uh, life, early life was, was in Egypt. So I consider myself, in a way, Egyptian. And uh, basically, there are many, many uh, very smart people within Egypt, outside Egypt, uh, all Egyptians, uh, there's more than half a million Egyptians living in Los Angeles, and some of them are scientists and very, very good scientists. You have great universities, uh, Alexandria, Tanta, uh, Cairo University, and, and other, many other universities in Egypt with putting out very good chemists, but they need training and we need to have resources. So I really, it's my dream, it really is my dream to see Egypt one day having its own infrastructure, not only education-wise, the, the sco drug discovery, not just for H, uh, not only, not just for HCV, but also many of the diseases that uh, that plague the Egyptians today, uh, and cancer, for example. And clearly, we need uh, to start developing this, and not only that, but also build the infrastructure for manufacturing these medicines. So not only will they be used in Egypt, but even used in the United States and other parts of the world. Dr. Shinazi, what do you tell millions of people who are watching us now about your medications, uh, which uh, the government finally managed to get, uh, not an affordable price, but um, a, a price that can be uh, affordable, I mean, can be used, because the, the, the original price was very expensive for Egyptians, and you know, most of the people sick are, uh, who cannot afford to pay uh, such uh, amount of money. Uh, what do you t tell people about that and how to prevent uh, virus C? 
Well, I think it has to go hand in hand, not only the treatment that's now going to become available in a few months' time in Egypt for the more difficult to treat patients and the more sicker patients first, but um, you know, there's an amazing opportunity for education. It goes hand in hand, education how the virus is transmitted and preventing people from being reinfected. That's going to be huge, not to share needles, not to share uh, razors, for example. So these are important things, not to share tooth toothbrushes, mm, uh, any blood products, because you can get reinfected. So it's extremely important that we have education, strong education in Egypt about how this virus is transmitted and cut down the transmission rate. Because today, unfortunately, we can treat maybe 200,000 uh, Egyptians, but then we also have another 200,000 new cases of hepatitis C. So we don't, we're not having an impact on the epidemic. So it's very, very important that we contain the virus, uh, that we educate our young people and our old people about this virus and how it's transmitted, and uh, stop sharing needles, uh, stop sharing the razors, stop sharing toothbrushes, uh, and sterilize, uh, to sterilize your equipment very, then when you go to the dentist and other places, it's very important to have everything sterile. So this is what I hope this will happen. It's education and the drug together can be a very powerful combination. So at the end of this interview, uh, um, what do you remember uh, uh, about your childhood in Egypt? Well, I went, um, I've spent a wonderful youth in Egypt up to the age of 13 years old. I remember uh, my father and my mother taking me to on the Corniche, walking and eating dora and pistachios. And then uh, we used to uh, go to the beach uh, all the time, San Stefano. You were in Alexandria, and, and right? Alexandria. In Alexandria, yes. Yeah. My city is Alexandria. Mm. And uh, I went to uh, a Nasser boys' school and also a Nasser girls' school. I studied there uh, for several years, and I was very proud uh, uh, students, unfortunately, I was uprooted uh, due to political situation, but, but this is behind us. Uh, we need to look at the future now. That's what's really important. And how is oh, your Arabic? Egypt. We missed Egypt for many. Two sentences more. I was happy to. Uh, when I was at school in Egypt, not only did I study uh, Arabic, but I also studied the Quran, and I studied many, uh, many different uh, languages, French, uh, of course, and other things like that. So different languages, we were uh, many, many people from different nations lived in Egypt for many centuries. So, um, you know, we were exposed to many languages, not just Arabic. So it's a one, it was a wonderful uh, time when I was a young man. When are you coming back to visit? Inshallah this year. Inshallah later on this year there's a big conference that is being put out uh, in the, in, uh, on the Red Sea and I hope to participate in that conference. So hopefully in November of this year I will come back and visit my old country. Dr. Shenazi, I want to thank you very much for your time. I know how precious your time is and uh, I know that we've been uh, tra yani, tracking you, tracing you uh, and trying to get this interview for such a long time. But I want to really thank you for all the effort that you've, you've, uh, you've given us uh, uh, to the humanity. You've given the humanity to get uh, this medicine uh, out. Uh, uh, thank you uh, and thank you for being with us. The pleasure is mine. Shokran and uh, big kiss to you and all the, uh, my Egyptian brothers Thank and you. sisters. Thank you. Ashkorak. Shokran. ده كان دكتور ريموند شنازي مخترع دواء السوفالدي هذا العقار الجديد الذي نتوقع أن يكون قريبا جدا في الأسواق في مصر بعد أن تمكنت الحكومة المصرية من الحصول على أو من إقرار اتفاق مع شركة جيلاد بالحصول عليه بواحد في المية فقط من تمنه دوليا ويعني بتقدمه للمصريين أمل جديد للعلاج من فيروس سي فاصل نرجع